What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We are going to continue on talking about Miss Redonda Voigt. I did part one, part two. So if you haven't watched that, go back and watch those two videos. And now let's get up to speed because this is part three. So I last left off stating that as a nurse in my practice, whenever I'm going to administer medications that can affect the patient adversely, which is almost just about every single medicines, but intravenous medicines, insulin, narcotics, we have high alert medications. I always like for a nurse to eyeball the medication that I selected and the amount in which I drew up. Because like I said, I don't ever want for something to go down with that patient. And then people looking at me sideways like, well, she did just give her this. I wonder if she gave the correct dose because y'all know. And if you don't know, that's how like things can go in nursing. So me, I'm always like, hey, the doctor ordered five of Haldol. If the patient never had Haldol before, haven't been getting Haldol, here, see, this is what I'm giving, okay? Just in case. That's just my nursing practice. Not everyone practices in that manner, but if you are a nurse, especially if you're a new nurse, I advise for you to take this advice. So Redonda now goes ahead to the medication dispensing system and she types in the VE and up came a group, you know, a wide selection of meds and she selected Vecaronium instead of Versed. And I explained previously that Versed is a sedative while Vecaronium is a paralytic. Now, I don't know the specific dosing that was ordered, but in any case, Redonda now gathers all of her supplies. And the one thing with these medications is that Versed, you don't need to reconstitute it. It comes in a liquid form within the vial. Whereas Vecaronium is a powd powdered medicine that you would need to reconstitute, meaning that you would need to either get sterile water or whatever um, it's required to reconstitute it with, mix it, and then draw it up. So in that moment, what I'm thinking is, I don't think Redonda ever gave Vecaronium before. I'm sure she's given Versed because that's a widely used common med within critical care settings. It's not anything that's used like far and few in between. We use Versed. I don't think Redonda ever gave Vecaronium in her two year career, but you guys can tell me whether or not I'm reaching because I'm only speculating. These are my thoughts, just being a nurse and working in the critical care setting. I think Redonda did not know what Vecaronium was. I don't think she's ever given it. And I think she wanted to appear knowledgeable. I think she felt like if she were to ask a double check, it would look unfavorable on her being a nurse working in critical care. So I think she decided to be like, you know what? I think in her mind, she knew she didn't know what that med was, but would probably feel stupid asking, which to me, we need to eliminate that from nursing. There's no such thing as a stupid question. There's no such thing as any nurse feeling stupid for asking. If that is the way that you think, please eliminate it because asking that question, clarifying and verifying can very well save you and save a patient's life. So I think, and also having the student with her, I don't know if Redonda felt like she had to display this kind of knowledgeable, oops, I almost hit the camera over. I don't know if Redonda felt like she had to display like this knowledgeable being like, yes, I do know it. I have a student with me. How dare I even ask, like, what do you mean? I can't let people know I don't know what that is. But I think that is what happened. That's what made her grab the Vecaronium instead of the Versed reconstituted it and didn't ask and I have a feeling you know sometimes when you're doing something and this this is not just a nursing you're performing a specific task or a skill and there's something in the back of your head telling you 
just double check it, just double check it. Just look at the instruction again, double check it, double check it because what you're doing might not be correct. You get that little voice of reason. And I have a feeling that little voice of reason was going on in the back of her mind. I just think that she ignored it, being busy, being under pressure and having to live up to that persona of being an ICU nurse and you know, know it and knowing everything. Because I'm gonna tell y'all this, there have been times when I would have a patient the patient might be going bad or deteriorating as we refer to it as. And there's so much stuff going on and doctors are asking for this and oh, I need this, pull this and give this. And I'm in my mind like, yo, I don't know what they're talking about. Like, oh my God, how am I gonna make this happen? Like, I, I don't know. And I'm always thankful because usually in the ICU, if things are going wrong, you have a group of people, a group of nurses will come around and assist. The charge nurse might be present. So for me, if I don't know it, I'm delegating that task off. Like, listen, he said he won this. I've never given it before. Can you pull it? Have you given this before? The doctor's asking for this. I don't know what that is. And listen, it could be my patient, but I am not drawing up any medications that I don't know. Like, I have no problem as a nurse saying, I don't know. I've never given that before. How, like, what? No, sorry. Some, some, pick somebody else to do it because I don't know it. So I think that's one of the greatest strengths of any nurse is to be able to say, I don't know. Okay, no one knows it all. So anyway, Redonda gathers the supplies, goes downstairs. Now, I don't know if she reconstituted the medication on the floor or if she reconstituted the medication when she got downstairs to the scanning, to the scanner area. I'm all slouching, sorry. Redonda goes downstairs and this is where, too, things get a little tricky. Because as a nurse, whenever you're going to administer medications to a patient that can affect cardiovascular status, neurological status, and this is an ICU nurse. Redonda was an ICU nurse. The patient left from the ICU unit and the patient was not monitored. That should have been one of the things that went off in her mind. Like, oh, shucks, this lady isn't monitored and we're going to be giving her something. Redonda proceeds to administer the medication. Not only did she administer the medication, she didn't stay with the patient to do an assessment or to continue to monitor the patient to ensure that the patient didn't have a reaction to that medication. She administered the medication and she left to go over to the emergency room as she initially stated she was going to do to complete that swallow, that um, safety screen for the swallowing. I just wanted to make sure I didn't say swallow eval and like, you know, confuse, confuse anyone. So Redonda pushes the paralytic. And I explained to you guys, I think in part two, that once you administer a paralytic, all of the muscles in the body becomes paralyzed, including your diaphragm. So there's not going to be any movement of the lung. There's no expansion. Miss Charlene Murphy gets put into the scanner. They perform the exam. Remember, she's not on the monitor. So they can't see that this lady is no longer breathing because there's nothing to indicate that. She's not being monitored. And once they complete the scan, they move her out the machine and realize that she is unresponsive. So of course, they call a rapid response. And I'm pretty sure at this point in time, everything just happened really quickly. They called a rapid response, which basically is an overhead page letting the entire hospital system know that there's a rapid response downstairs in the scanner area. That means we need all hands on deck. Critical care doctor needs to get there. They need to come with intubation material. They need to come with IV supplies just in case they need to, like, you know, put the patient on a ventilator. They need to um, insert different IV access. So they call the rapid response. Meanwhile, Redonda's over in the emergency room and she herself with her student heard the rapid response. So they make their way from the emergency room back over to the scanner area and the team that's over there, like all of the other healthcare professionals that, that's within the scanner area, they started doing CPR on the patient because remember, she's no longer res responsive. So Redonda jumps into action. She and the student, they kind of help with the situation. Um, the critical care team comes, they, they rapidly intubate the patient and Redonda assists with transporting the patient back up to the unit. The patient had family members waiting in the room because remember, this lady was, I believe, either downgraded to a lower level of care 
or she was waiting to be discharged because she had been cleared to go. So she wasn't truly an ICU patient before going to the scanner. Coming back from the scanner, she is not only an ICU patient, she's unresponsive and she's on a ventilator, intubated. The ventilator is doing all of the work for her. So the family members are in the room like, what in the world happened? Like she was fine just 30 minutes ago. She went downstairs to have this test done and now she's back and she's on a ventilator. Like what is going on? Even the doctors on the unit, they didn't really have much of an explanation as to what went down. I think one of the things that they were thinking could have been that whatever brain injury she came in could have possibly gotten worse, causing a change in mental status, causing her to need to be intubated. But they weren't able to pinpoint that right away. Everything just kind of happened so quickly. So Redonda now is on the unit with her student and she goes to find the primary nurse who is in charge of Miss Charlene Murphy. And, you know, I guess they exchanged some conversation like, yeah, I don't know what happened, but whatever the case is, I gave her the first set. And she must have, you know, speculated on what could have possibly happened when the patient was in the scanner. But then, I think a few minutes later, the medication, Redonda had the remainder of it in her pocket. And she either needed to waste the rest of the medication or she needed to get a co-signer on the medication. So she pulls the medication vial out of her pocket and she hands it to the primary nurse like, hey, we need to co-sign this because this is the verse set that I gave to the patient. The primary nurse apparently looks at the vial and was like, shall... The heart attack I would have had, the heart attack I would have had if I were the primary nurse and if I was Redonda. Because immediately, the moment the primary nurse gave off that energy, like, girl, I, if I were Redonda, I would have received that energy and been on the floor. Because in that moment, I would have known. I, I can't even imagine. So the primary nurse is like, you gave Vecaronium. You gave Vecaronium. This is a paralytic agent. And it was like, in that moment, Redonda was like, O-S-H blank T. So per the court documents and per the news and all the different reports, upon recognizing that she administered the patient a paralytic instead of a sedative, Redonda immediately went and she self-reported. She went to the doctors and she was like, this is what happened. I gave the wrong med. And I'm pretty sure the doctors were like, uh-huh. That explains everything. And I'm pretty sure in that point, they're probably like, this is not going to end well. Because once you push the paralytic, like, I don't know the onset, like the onset as to when, how quickly the drug takes place, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty fast. Once you administered the par once she administered the paralytic, the patient lost respiratory function. So remember, as the paralytic is going in, the patient is conscious. She's awake. All that's happening is that she can no longer move her hands. She can no longer move her feet. She's paralyzed. And as they're putting her in the scanner, I'm pretty sure in her mind, she probably was like, yo, what... Why can't I move? Like, what is happening? And slowly but surely, Miss Charlene Murphy suffocated in that scanner. Now, it was a CAT scan. So CAT scans are usually pretty quick. Once you put the patient in, sometimes three to five minutes, it's a test. It's, the test is over. We take the patient out. But that's a good bit of time for your brain to go without oxygen. And then by the time it takes for, like, the scanner, t the, the health, the other healthcare members of the team, like the, the CT techs, the CT scan techs and all of those people, by the time it takes for them to put their gloves on, go back into the room and realize like this lady isn't breathing and initiate high quality CPR, which I'm pretty sure they could not do that on the scanner table, honey, because the scanner table is very expensive. And one thing about CT techs, you are not going to break their table. They are very protective of that scanner table. So I'm pretty sure they had to transport her from table to bed, get in position, because the rooms are usually tight. I know it was a hot mess before good, high-quality CPR was initiated. So Miss Shirley Murphy's 
brain went without oxygen for who knows how many minutes. I don't even know. Before I even go further, let's back it on up a little bit. Let's go back to when Redonda pulled the medication and drew it up. When you pull medication from the medication dispensing system, or even if the medication is delivered to you, one of the things you must do as a nurse in nursing school that's basic training is part of medication administration we go through this in clinical we go through this with dosage calculation you must read the label you must read the label like you have to eyeball the label to know what is it that you're given even doctors need to eyeball the label i remembered one time i was working with one of my favorite intensivists and uh, we were um, in a patient's room and he was getting ready to insert a central line because the patient needed intravenous access. And I had to draw up his sterile, no, I had to draw up his saline from the sterile vials, like draw it up, right? And even though it was only normal saline, which essentially can be harmless in small quantities to a patient, as I'm drawing it up, he says to me, he's like, Kendra, turn the vial so I can actually eyeball and see it. He said it's just part of medical training. You know, we're always supposed to see the container, the vial, the label of whatever it is a person is drawing up and handing to us. We're supposed to eyeball it. So you're supposed to read your labels. Never can anyone come to me with a syringe that's empty and say to me, here, I drew this up. Can you give it? Or I drew it up. Nah, you can't waste it. I'll pull another one and I'll draw it up. Redonda probably, I don't, see that's the thing. I can't say, I can't say that she didn't read the label. She probably read the label, but probably had no clue what the drug was, but was too, I don't want to say afraid, but probably felt that she would be looked at as incompetent because we also have to take into consideration unit culture especially working in an ICU because nurses have been known for gossiping, bad mouthing, talking about each other behind, you know, your behind each other's backs, especially if it's a nurse that was in a situation who had to administer a med and maybe didn't know how to draw it up the quantity, didn't know how to approach this, didn't know how to do that. It's not uncommon for nurses to get with their friends and be like, oh, her patient was going bad and the doctor asked her to give this and she didn't even know what to do. I don't know for sure if that was the culture on that unit, but it wouldn't surprise me if it were. And that is what contributed to Redonda feeling like, let me not even ask. Like, yeah, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's for this. I think this is the right thing. Let me go ahead and give it. Like, I don't know. And I, listen, I'm not trying to give her any leeway. I'm just analyzing all of the different things that could have been possibly going through her mind me being a nurse and understanding and observing and kind of seeing how nurses move. Even though, like me, like I said, I told y'all before, I'm a G, okay? Certain things you're just not getting me to do. Like, I am confident in knowing what I don't know, and I'm asking. And if I don't know it, if you want to laugh, go ahead, be my guest. But, or talk about me behind my back, be my guest. What's more important for me is that I've never harmed a patient. So, I'm trying to understand or trying to probably just piece together what happened but in any event Redonda you you gave a medicine that you didn't know we as nurses should not and cannot and should not get into the practice or the habit of administering medications that we do not know there have been times where even in a pill form I've come across a med and I'm like I ain't never give this before I'll either do a quick Google, which is why I don't understand why we're so against having cell phones in the work area, in the work area, because sometimes the computers don't even have internet access and I need my phone. I can do a quick look because sometimes some medications are so new, the reference manual in the computer system won't even give us all the details we need to fully understand why we're giving this meds. Or if my patient is awake and they're completely with it, I'll ask the patient, hey, this is a medication I see here ordered for you. Can you tell me why you're taking this medication? And a lot of times patients have educated me on the reasons why they're taking a specific medicine, how they take it, and patients can educate you. So as a nurse working at the bedside, don't ever underestimate your patient's knowledge. Ask them if ever they're taking a medicine and you're not sure why they're taking it, ask them. Also, medications can have multiple use. For example, 
a patient can be prescribed propanolol and it can be related to a cardiovascular issue whereas someone else can be taking it for anxiety so just always ask your patient do you know what this medication is for and why you're taking it and when you're administering or administering a medication you're also supposed to know why you're giving it for what reason because let's just say like i said a medication has multiple use for what reason is this patient getting this medicine for what reason because this one might be taking it for this reason. However, this patient over here is taking it for a completely other reason. So always understand your indication. Why is this medication ordered for your patient? So anyway, back to Ms. Redonda now. So they discovered that Redonda gave Vecaronium instead of Versed. And I believe once it was reported, I think they took her off the schedule. They launched their investigation and I believe she was terminated shortly after. However, let me tell you how trifling institutions can be because the hospital system did not report the patient's death as a sentinel event caused by a medication error by one of their nurses. They try to cover it up. They covered it up. They got rid of Redonda, even though she did self-report, but that was a tragic med error to make. So the hospital covered it up and it took for a whistleblower, okay? Because what happened was months had passed by. Redonda went to the board of nursing because she was referred to the board of nursing by the facility. And initially the Tennessee board of nursing cleared her of any wrongdoing. They did not take her nursing license because the intent behind the mistake was not malicious. She did not go in with an intent to take the patient's life. It was a terrible era. So the board was like, mm, okay, no disciplinary action, right? Months pass by and the hospital system is just like, well, we just gonna keep this going because don't nobody know what happened and we just gonna keep it like that until a whistleblower reported the incident. Someone notified the state that a couple months ago, a patient was administered a paralytic on accident by one of the nurses. The hospital fired the nurse. However, no action has been taken against the hospital. There has not been an investigation launched by the state and they didn't believe that the hospital reported it. Now, I don't know who on the inside was the whistleblower, but the state of Tennessee pulled up like for real. State of Tennessee pulled up, launched an entire investigation, and that is how the prosecutor and everybody became involved. And that's the reason why it was turned into a criminal case where Redonda was found guilty. I don't have her exact charges handy. I'll probably put it on the screen. If not, you guys can Google it. But Redonda was definitely found guilty. And because of the, because of the entire case, the, the Tennessee Board of Nursing had to, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh my goodness, terminate her, they turn, basically they terminated her nursing license, saying that she can no longer practice nursing because of the Sentinel event and the huge fatal medication error that she made. And I believe the university system also received several fines. And one of the reasons why a lot of institutions don't report when things go wrong in their institution is because they don't want the state to pull up. Because when the state pulls up, they usually pull up unannounced. And not only are they coming to investigate what happened, but the state is also looking like, oh, by the way, that wall over there looks a little bit dirty. What's been going on? So every every and anything is up for grabs when the state comes in. So no facility wants the state to come Family in. Family of Miss Charlene Murphy, they received a large settlement from the hospital system. While they were very distraught over the passing of their mother, their daughter, their sister, their aunt, wife, you know, Miss Charlene was really loved. The family, I believe, forgave Redonda. They did not want for Redonda to receive jail time, which thankfully she did not. And uh, recently, I someone left it in the comments, one of my comments as well, and I Googled it. Recently, I believe Redonda approached the Tennessee Board of Nursing asking for her nursing license to be reinstated. Now, a lot of you all might 
disagree with me on this don't come for me too hard in the comments but I've said this from day one I wouldn't be mad if the Tennessee Board of Nursing reinstates her nursing license after a period of time because I honestly feel that as a nurse when you make a mistake especially such a terrible mistake you would not make that same mistake twice. I guarantee you that if Redonda ever gets the opportunity to practice as a nurse again, she will be one of the safest practicing nurses ever because the mistake that she learned was such a valuable lesson for her practice, she wouldn't make the same mistake again. So I'm not against Redonda ever being able to practice again as a nurse. I know a lot of you in the comments are going to be like, oh no, she should never get to practice because she did this, she did that. I believe in redemption. I believe people can be rehabilitate, rehabilitated. And I do believe in second chances. I do. Because when I think about Redonda, I consider all of the different aspects that contributed to her making that fatal error. And everyone is human. And I know from the outside looking in, it can be like, oh, well, she didn't read the label. Oh, well, she didn't do this. Oh, well, she didn't do that. No one's taken into account the toxic nature, the nursing culture, and how the mental effects that can have on a nurse. Like, I don't think a lot of you all take that into consideration. And once again, I'm not making excuses for her. I just... I'm looking at it from all different angles because I have compassion for her because I know it was not her intent to have that patient's life be lost. I know that wasn't her. I also intent. just want to say that Redonda's story serves as a lesson for all nurses out there. Every single nurse can learn from Redonda's situation. And a lot of nurses had compassion for Redonda because we understand how things work on the floor. And we understand how certain mistakes can be made, even with Redonda not, even with Redonda making a mistake that we know <laughs> that's a mistake you really shouldn't have made if you had read the label and if you didn't know the medication, you shouldn't have given it. I also understand too that not all nursing training is the same. Not everyone gets trained the same. I told you guys that I went to an HBCU for nursing school and those professors used to get us together. When I'm talking about gather us up together, I went to school during a time when we had to go up to the hospital the night before and gather information on our patients, go home and create an entire care plan for the next day. They would give us two patients because in the event that we get to the clinical site in the morning, and one of the patients left, transferred off the unit, got discharged, to deceased. We had a backup patient and we had to know everything about the patient. I'm talking about there were times that people got sent home because they didn't understand the medication, the implication, the indication, the side effects, nursing considerations of said medicines when they had to administer it. Nursing instructors would be like, oh, you didn't do your job? You're trying to kill patients here? Go home. Now, that was never my practice when I was an instructor because I don't believe that is the way nursing education should be. But I went to school during a time where that's what the nursing instructors did. They were no joke, none whatsoever. But I am very happy for the lesson we all received from Redonda's situation. And I think it's also very important to have grace and compassion for Redonda as a nurse. I was actually happy to see a lot of the nurses who rallied around her, who went to her court hearing, who was there on the day that she was found guilty. I really do like to see nurses unify and come together for a good cause, speaking up about safe, safe staffing and just overall trying to overhaul nursing practice. So, all right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching the video. Like I said, let me know if you guys, you know, want to chop it up a little bit more about this Redonda situation, I probably should do a live on it so that way we can really get into it, right?